Yeah, well, thank you very much. I'm also very delighted to be here and to share some thoughts with you about specifically the health risks from a systemic perspective. And what do I mean with systemic perspective? It means that all these risks are much more interrelated and that we have cross-sectoral, cross-boundary and cross-dimensional aspects of risk specifically associated with food threats. And what do I mean with systemic? Basically, we are trying to divide the risk field in two major parts. One is what we call the risk vector or the risk agent, and the other one is the risk absorbing system. What does that mean? Well, we have a multitude of causes for risks, and this could be something like zoosis that we just have experienced right now. It could be something in food that, uh, you know, you have bacteria or any kind of other um, problems associated with it. But if you take the vectors, those are the ones that will affect the risk absorbing system, there are only few left. And when we're talking about food, we have three physical ones. One could be that with food, uh, maybe some energy release is involved, that's fairly rare. But then we have substance and this could be chemicals or it's biota and that is fungi, that is bacteria and that is viruses. And so those are the ones that are really the parts that can affect our health in a very negative impact. But we also we have social vectors. And I think that's important because we always have interactions between the natural and the social vectors. And the social vectors are basically information. So information can actually kill if you have wrong information about food safety, for example, you do the wrong thing in order to protect yourself. It's power. And that has been, I think, very clearly mentioned already in uh, Flora's talk just a minute ago that, you know, if the power is distributed in the wrong way or exerted in a very problematic way, it can also have major impacts on risks and on risk governance. It is uh, potentially violence, which is associated with power, and it's money. So it's all those are major agents. Now, what does that help us if you look at these agents? We have interactions between them. And that means very often we can see that we have so-called risk cascades. And that could be when we talk about the pandemic right now, it might have started with the food system. We're not totally sure about this, but that's probably the most uh, probable hypothesis. And then uh, it has, of course, gone over to a health system. So it's viruses that go into the health system. Uh, depending on power and information, it had been aggravated. But then it also cascaded into other areas. We have a lot of economic hardship coming from that specific uh, pandemic. We have problems with educating our children because schools have been closed. Uh, we have problems with social isolation. We had increase in domestic violence. So we suddenly see that there are whole cascading aspects of risk that we need to take into account. And it's much easier for risk governors to deal with one risk at a time than with multiple risks at the same time. Now coming to the risk absorbing system, and that is a target of the risk vector. And normally we talk about human beings, and that of course is the most important element in terms of health, but it calls to be ecosystem quality. So any kind of environmental risk that we may face, but there's also other kind of social risks or political risks, or a risk about political and social and individual identity. All of those are kind of targets for these vectors. And it's very important to also to think about the target that is being affected. Now, what does that mean specifically for the food risks that we're talking about? The first thing is that many often food risks are not single risks. There are multiple risks. And these multiple risks always unfold in terms of health impacts, economic impacts, social impacts, and political impacts. We've seen food wars between different countries, sometimes triggered by food safety um, um, scandals or food uh, safety problems. And we can see it right now again, a little bit between China and the rest of the world and, and with many other uh, food related risks that have become social and political triggers for crisis. And I think it's very important to include that into our analysis. It's not just about human health, it's also about many other factors and goals and objectives that uh, people value.
So that's the first element that we need to take into account when we talk about food system. The second one is that food safety, nutrition, food security are all very highly correlated. Uh, it means that we often talk about food safety, but the more serious element is probably nutritional value. And we can see that wrong nutrition kills many more people uh, than contaminants in food. Uh, but it's totally different from risk perception. People perceive that the contaminants of food are the ones that kills them. If they overeat, if they are eating not enough, uh, um, um, whatever, and that can be due to poverty, but can also due to uh, just the opposite of, uh, of having, you know, uh, too much food available. Uh, all of that can have major negative impacts on our health, and many more people die because of wrong diet rather than about food safety issues. Uh, so that's the second major point that we put things into priority. And the third major thing is that. Uh, this kind of perspective helps us to communicate better. Um, we tend to communicate just about, you know, viruses and, and bacteria and their impact on our uh, health system. But we are not talking too much about, you know, what is the food system like? How is it organized? Um, how is safety being um, governed? How it's being managed? Uh, why things go wrong in some places or not? And uh, what can we do also to protect ourselves? So the consumer uh, is also a very important element there. And I think if we can get that systemic view also into our communication, we may be much better to have all the people who are involved, all the institutions, all the customers, the merchants, the farmers, that they take their part of the responsibility. It is not possible to place all the responsibility on the government, on the regulatory system. It is also not fair to put it all on the farmer. I think we need to make sure that we have a divided system of responsibility or shared system, maybe even a better word, in which each of the uh, um, representative of each part of the value um, uh, chain is taking some responsibility in the domain in which that responsibility can actually be effective. So these are my three major lessons that I would like uh, to tell you first, you know, there is this a very good thing of systemic view because you extend the amount of uh, the kind of risk concerns uh, that are in the world. Uh, secondly, it's very important to say that uh, nutritional diet is a much more important factor and that you set the priorities right. And thirdly, make sure that the communication is about the entire value chain and about the shared responsibilities of each of the constituencies. Thank you very much.